Hello, I am the Story Girl, and welcome to the story of the poor girl and the king. There once was a farmer plowing in his fields when he saw something glinting in the distance. What could that be? He walks up and he looked down and he saw that it was a mortar made of pure gold. You may be wondering what a mortar is. What a mortar really is, is a stone bowl that usually has spices put into it. And then you use a hard, small club to smash up those spices, to grind them up into a powder so that you can cook with them. He found a mortar of pure gold. Daughter, daughter, he said, come look what I found, look at this. And his daughter ran out into the field and saw what he was holding. Why, father, I believe that mortar is made out of pure gold, she said. Yes, it is. You know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to take it to the king. Oh, no, father, you shouldn't do that. Yes, I should. It's pure gold, isn't it? And we don't have anything to be doing with gold around here, but he has gold coming out of his windows up there. But, father, he will ask you where the pestle is. Remember, the pestle is that little club that you use to tamp down the spices. He will ask you where the golden pestle is. He will throw you in prison because he thinks you have stolen it and kept it for yourself. <sniffs> no, he won't. He'll be so happy to have this pure gold mortar. Well, this old farmer decided not to listen to his daughter and went up to the castle. He got as far as the royal advisor with his mortar Here's mortar that I brought for the king. You dirty old man, you stolen a golden mortar, and where's the pestle? Uh, there weren't no pestle. There wasn't a pestle. Surely you're just keeping it for yourself so you can sell it and have all the money for yourself. No, no, I won't hear another word. Off to prison with him. And they jerked the golden mortar out of his hands and led him off to prison. Well, a few days later, the old farmer is brought before the king for sentencing. <sighs> well, old farmer, said the king, what would be your crime? I should have listened to my daughter. What was that? I should have listened to my daughter, said the farmer. What do you mean? And the farmer explained how he had found the golden mortar in his field, but with no pestle. And he decided that he would bring it as a gift for the king, because the king is the only person who knows what to do with gold in those parts. But his daughter told them if he didn't also bring the pestle to go with it, then he would be thrown in prison. And here I am, thrown in prison and all. I should have listened to my daughter. Well, old farmer, it seems that your biggest crime is not listening to the wisdom of your daughter. She seems like a very wise girl. She knew exactly what I would and my people would do. Tell you what, I will release you to return to your daughter, but I just might have a position in my household for her if she is truly as wise as she seems. Tell her that I want her to appear before me tomorrow, neither riding nor walking. But she must come, neither clothed or unclothed, and she must be there. If she can fulfill all of these things, then I will give her a position in my castle. All right, said the farmer, and he went home to his daughter. Well, the next day, the king was walking about his castle grounds when he saw a very strange processional. It seemed to be a crowd of people who were following a donkey, and he looked closer and he saw that at behind the donkey being pulled along was a girl. Not a bad looking girl either, but this girl was covered in fishing nets. So much so that there was more net than girl. And even though she wasn't wearing a stitch of clothing, she was completely decent, but she had bunched up some of the net underneath her feet so that she was holding on to the donkey's reins. It was pulling her along. So as you see, she wasn't riding the donkey, but she wasn't walking either. <laughs> Good one, said the king. 
Well, I see that you must be the farmer's very wise daughter. Yes, sire, said she. Well, you're so wise and so good looking. I've decided the position I want you to have in my castle is my queen. And so that very day, the poor girl and the king were married. And they lived very happily together. Several months passed and another case was brought before the king. The king, as you see, was in charge of settling all disputes between all the people in his kingdom. And these two farmers came to him. Neither of them were the poor girl's farmer, who is now the queen. Two farmers came up, and one of them was leading an old cow and a little young foal, a little young horse. And the other was leading a mare, a motherly horse. And they were arguing and bickering, and so much the king had to silence them and call on them one at a time to say what had happened. Well, it just so happens that the man with the horse claims that the man with the cow and the little baby horse had stolen his little baby horse. I have not, said the other man. The cow gave birth to the baby horse. He did not, said the man with the horse. My horse did. A cow can't give birth to a horse. But don't you see how much they love each other? said the man with the cow. They are mother and son. Well, far be it from the king to separate two animals that appeared to love each other so much that they could be mother and son. So he let the man with the cow keep the baby horse. And the man with the horse went home all in a dither until he remembered that he had heard that the king had recently married a very wise woman. And so he petitioned the queen. He went to the queen and he explained the matter to her. And she told him exactly what to do. The next day, while the king was walking about his castle grounds, he came upon the very farmer that had brought the horse to him the day before. But he didn't have his horse today. Instead, what he had was a large fishing net and he cast it out over the road and he let it settle in the dust. And then he brought it back up and he looked inside of the net oh, and he cast it out over the road and he brought it back in and he looked in it and oh, what are you doing? said the king. Fishing, said the man and he cast the net back over the road. Fishing on a road? You're not going to catch very many fish there. Even I know the fish don't live in a road. Well, you see, sire, I'm going to catch just as many fish from this road as as many cows are going to give birth to baby horses. Well, the king saw what this meant. You're the man who I saw yesterday. And do you mean to make a fool of the king by saying that I made a bad decision? Yes! Your Majesty, who told you to say it to me? Who told you? It took a little bit of asking, but the man with the net bowed his head and said, The Queen. The Queen? She did, did she? She thinks she's so smart she can make a fool out of the king. Nobody makes a fool out of the king. And he called the queen before him and said, Did you tell this man to do thus and this? And she said, Yes, your majesty, you made the wrong decision, and I wanted you to know that. Nobody makes a fool out of the king. Sorry, but I cannot be married to a woman who mocks me and teaches my people to make fun of me. So we are, from this moment on, are not going to be married anymore, and you can go back to that little cottage they used to call a home. Very well, she said. But the king was not a hard-hearted man, and he said, But since you have been such a good queen these few months, you can take one thing from the castle, any one thing that you would like to brighten up your drab little cottage life. Very well, your majesty. I just ask one other request. Since it has been such a wonderful few months being the queen and being married to you, could I have one last meal with you, prepared by my own hands? Well, and 
to see anything wrong with that, said the king. And then that night they shared a meal. Next morning, the king woke up. He looked around. He didn't remember going to bed. Oh, his head hurt. What happened? He wasn't in the castle. He was inside of a, a hovel, a cottage with a dirt floor and a thatched roof. Where am I? I've been kidnapped! I've been taken away from the castle! And he run, bolts to the door, and there standing in the doorway is the poor girl wearing her poor country dress. And she said, don't be alarmed. You said I could take one thing from the castle, the thing that I like the best. So I decided to take you. And the king smiled and the king laughed and the king saw what a fool he had been. And he and the queen went home to the castle. The end. I am the story girl, though I have often been called a dreamer and with good reason. Everybody is always telling stories. If you keep your ears open, you might notice yourself telling a story. It might be the story of what happened while you're at the grocery store. It might be the story of something you remember from that, what happened several years ago. What I want you to do this week is catch yourself telling a story. Think about the stories that we give and receive every day. Thank you for joining the story today. If there's a story you would like to hear me tell, something that is your favorite on the story list, please leave me a comment below. If you're enjoying the stories as much as I am, please like and subscribe. So happy to have more and more people who love stories as much as I do. See you next time.